Minnesota Original is made possible by the State Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota. On this edition of Minnesota Original, Shea Cage and E.G. Bailey founded the Minnesota Spoken Word Association, dedicated to literacy and youth leadership through spoken word. The Fitzgerald Theater's majestic Wurlitzer organ puts the power of 1,600 pipes at Mike Grandchamp's fingertips. Chinese pipa player Gao Hong and Butterfly are a group of world-class musicians who combine African, Indian, Asian, and Western influences. These artists and more, now on Minnesota Original. Our wedding invitation said, today I marry my best friend which for me, that's been sort of at the heart of our relationship is being with somebody and finding somebody that I feel like I could have a conversation with until I'm um, 150. Um. <laughs> we started working together artistically for a couple years before we started dating. So we have an administrative relationship um, and a personal intimate relationship. And now we have a son and another one on the way, you know, another child on the way. So. 11 years of being together. Great Granny would sit us young ones down by the riverside on Sundays and she would hold women's camp. That's what she called it. Great Granny say everybody always running around looking for a revolution. Most people wouldn't know a revolution if it snuck up and bit them on it. Great Granny say the real revolution lies on the skins of women and their palms, and their scalps, and their thighs and backsides. She said most people call them stretch marks. They be history lines tracing back to our very first ancestors. Great Granny told us stories about strong women that led underground railroads with babies on their backs. Women that were hoes and pushed aside, that stood in long lines demanding change. She told us stories about Nzingas and Ansadas, Winnies and Tuckers, Sojourners, Maybells and Estelles. Great Granny showed me her own lines once. For your eyes only, she said. And she lifted up her apron and dress, and with two fingers starting from the insides of her palms, leading to the tops of her shoulders, down and around her tummy, running up her thighs and down her backsides. History lines. The definition that we came up with and, and created was that spoken word is extenuating the rhythmic elements that are inherent in a poem. Because every poem, every piece of writing and performance has a rhythm to it. Um, and so as a spoken word artist, your job is to bring that rhythm to the forefront. There's a lot of different ways to do spoken word. And having done it for the last 15 plus years, we've done it has just straight spoken word performance a cappella. We've done it has theater, we've done it uh, has radio, we've done it has film, and then sort of mixing and fusing different genres together. Spoken word to me is, is you look at it like dance. You know, you can have dance in all kinds of different styles. Granny say, they don't call her no revolution child. She just is. One of the things that we want people to take away is the importance, just, you know, it's simple at the end of the day, but the importance of expressing ourselves, the importance of us, whatever generation we are, whether it's our generation or the younger generation or the older one, being able to tell our stories 
We founded the Minnesota Spoken Word Association over 10 years ago to really use poetry to inspire young people and their stories. And we teach in schools from elementary to college level. What you're gonna do is pick a part of your piece from midterm and you're gonna roll with that story forward. So this is a memory refresher for everybody. It's also a listening exercise too. Beware! What the hell is you building? Really what I feel like we're teaching is just teaching people to tell their stories because I think for so many years, especially culturally, we, you know, our stories have been left out. Performance-wise, what we focus on a lot currently is spoken word with music. Bringing together, like you just said, with spoken word, just taking it to the next evolution is what we are really sort of exploring, the musicality of the poem. As he disappears into the night of his birth, the battalion follows, leaving pale light against breathing darkness. When returned to scene, cuffed and dragged by Sodom and Gomorrah to the waiting ships, Italian follows, leaving pale light against breathing darkness. The rest of the final glance. He has never seen or heard from again. In the shadows, in the shadows, wait, wait, ghosts, ghosts, wait in the shadows. In the shadows, in the shadows, in the shadows. harbor, blades for the cutting, wait. And the shadows, and the shadows. I told myself that I wasn't going to move for nobody. Let no man trouble me. But my feet got tired. My legs come to trembling. And I realized it was easier to move than to stand still. <laughs> I would love people to walk away uh, feeling inspired to take risks, inspired to collaborate, inspired to you know fall down on their face flat and get messy and dirty and say, ooh, that didn't feel good, but get back up and say, okay, I think I'm gonna try this. Because that's really the beauty of growth. Grandchamp, and I'm the organist at the Fitzgerald Theater in St. Paul, and the organ behind me is the mighty Wurlitzer pipe organ that I play. I started playing the organ when I was 14 in a roller rink, and then played mostly in supper clubs, and then fell in love with the Wurlitzer Theater Pipe Organ in the early 1970s. The Wurlitzer has huge variety in terms of sound. It's a 25-piece orchestra, plus a rhythm section with all the percussion instruments. And it has a tremendous dynamic range, and it also has an immense amount of drama when you play. Pipe organ is generally a classical instrument, and it's made for playing uh, maybe sacred music or the music of Bach. And a theater organ is really what's called a unit orchestra. And so you have different kind of pipes that would be more orchestral in nature, all the percussion instruments, and the organ was really designed to play symphonic music and pop music of the 1920s.
I think the most challenging thing for me about playing the organ is when I accompany silent films and finding just the right music to match the action and then rehearsing it over and over again so it fits perfectly behind the silent film. With silent films, originally it was piano accompaniment. Then that increased to having an orchestra. And the motion picture uh, theaters figured out that it was a lot cheaper to buy a Wurlitzer pipe organ than it was to hire a 25-piece orchestra. And the Wurlitzer has a glockenspiel, xylophone, tuned sleigh bells, cathedral chimes, a marimba, and when you put them all together, it's a lot of fun. Three years ago, the Fitzgerald Theater established an indie artists program, and the goal of that program is to get young professional musicians interested in the Wurlitzer and interested in using it in the kind of music that they play. My name is David Samala. I'm a musician and a composer, and I'm the current artist in residence at the Fitzgerald Theater. I found out about this program uh, from Tony Bowl, who's the director of the Fitzgerald Theater. It's something that's developed by uh, Minnesota Public Radio to sort of bridge the audience between the current and the public radio stations. fun to have at your fingertips a lot of things that are normally reserved for orchestra. And I love that it's organic nature. It's, it's sort of a, it's just a big beast and it, it kind of is, is the theater. It's so big that it's, it's up in the ceilings and it's in the walls and it's just a big thing that feels very alive to me. I love it. It's really whimsical. so different from what I play, and the audience loves it, so I, I think it's great. It's really a kick introducing the world to two younger musicians because they become so excited about it. It's a huge amount of joy for me. When someone views my artwork, I want them to get a sense of beauty, to feel that sort of peacefulness that I feel when I'm out there, sort of serene. And I want them to get a sense that I enjoyed it. And so hopefully that is something that they can feel. I'm Cheryl LeClaire Summer, and I'm a pastel and oil painter.
I like to paint images that are pure nature without any human hand in it. I grew up in the country and it's something that I really, it speaks to me. And so those are the images that I really enjoy painting. about pastels is that they're uh, this very tactile medium and you're, you've got it in your hand there's nothing between you and the paint in the paper the colors on pastel can be so vibrant and it that doesn't have that sheen oil paint is a different medium in, in terms of you, you have a brush between you and and the canvas although when you have a pastel stick in your hand you're still trying to manipulate the stick just like you would a brush. When you have a, an underpainting, uh, particularly in watercolor, you can get some happy accidents. And rather than paint the scene as exactly how it is, I try to look at what the watercolor underpainting, what happened, because that's a, an uncontrollable medium, at least for me and that's the purpose really of doing it, is to come up with something that's there that you can respond to and that's, uh, it's alive. I prefer to paint in either summer or winter. Winter pre presents a lot of challenges because you're outside and it's cold, but it really has beautiful shadows and it creates these beautiful shapes because of the snow. This time of the year, the, the early spring, it's really difficult because there's just a lot of branches without any shapes. And in the summer, you get the beautiful green uh, in Minnesota, although that can be pretty challenging because sometimes there, that's all there is is green. Um, fall is a, a wonderful season to paint in and really, they're all great. <laughs> Pastel has a, a, a limitation, I guess you'd call it, and that's that you can't mix colors readily. You can take two different color sticks and blend them together and they may give you what you want. You wanna have all these wonderful colors that are available for you. And uh, one thing about pastel is it doesn't dry. It, it's a dry medium to begin with, and so you can go back in a year later if you don't like something and you can change it. And uh, that makes it a medium that's really helpful for someone who's uh, like uh, beginners, especially really like that part about pastel. Art is a challenge and that's what I really enjoy about it. I strive to keep learning uh, my craft and I'd like to, to think of myself as a, an emerging intermediate artist, someone who has uh, mastered some techniques, some, has some talent in certain areas, yet I still see that I could paint forever for, for my whole life and I could still learn. And that's what I really en I enjoy about it is that it, it's something that you can continue to think about and it's a puzzle and it's a puzzle that you're trying to put together.
Minnesota Original is made possible by the State Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota. <laughs>